Hey folks, Greg Marshawn here. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Instructor-Led Training Program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. In this episode, we're gonna talk about selling recommended maintenance or preventative maintenance, right? Now, most of you are well aware of the opportunity that's out there on the road, but I'm just gonna say it again, that there are an awful lot of vehicles on the road that need preventative maintenance right here, right now. And so most of your customers standing at your service counter are due for some sort of maintenance. And there are some crazy statistics out there as to how much money that represents, and it's well over a billion dollars. So let's learn to pick up some of those pieces, okay? now. We joke about customers not doing preventative maintenance or not knowing they need to. And then there's some customers that do it, but maybe not crazy consistently or as consistently as we'd like them to. And yet again, there's many customers that will say no thank you when presented the courtesy inspection with some sort of preventative maintenance item on it. So what's up? What's the problem? Remember that customer buying process? Now, I'm not gonna go through all the steps here in this video, but that customer buying process that begins with need recognition, that's the problem. Customers are not at need recognition with maintenance items. There's no, there's no urgency. There, there's no, yeah, the car still runs just fine. And so as a service advisor, you need to learn to create need recognition for your customer around preventative maintenance. Sometimes easier said than done, but really, it's quite simple. How do you know, you yourself, know when you need something? A uh, light comes on on my dashboard. Why do you think the manufacturers put the maintenance reminder light on on the dashboard? Because customers didn't recognize that they needed certain maintenance things, such as oil changes, and so they put a light on so customers would have some sort of recognize need for maintenance. All right, so a light comes on. Maybe something stops working. Dead on the side of the road is a pretty good indication that I need some service. Maybe somebody I trust told me I needed something. Maybe, I, maybe my neighbor bought a new truck and I thought I needed a new truck. The bottom line is some, there's some sort of trigger that shows us or tells us or lets us know that we need something. The challenge is, for preventative maintenance, that's still true, but those triggers are very different. You see, we all have some way of recognizing need, and all of your customers have some way of recognizing their needs. Well, we need a way for everyone to recognize preventative maintenance as a need. The thing with preventative maintenance though is, as I said earlier, it's not immediate. The, the, the customer may not be willing to pay for something that they don't feel an immediate need for. Yeah, maybe they trust you. Yeah, maybe they recognize you guys do a great job, but if they don't feel the need, they're not gonna buy. And yeah, I don't see any harm being done. You know, the vehicle still runs. I, yeah, I know for you and I, it's crazy because we know, we know what the need is. We know that there is harm being done by not doing it. But how many of you neglect your maintenance on your vehicle? I mean, I'll admit right now, my maintenance reminder light is on in the, in the truck. I don't really know how long it's been on. But, you know, things still goes down the road and I'm a busy guy and it, it, you know how that goes, right? There's just no urgency and your customers can feel the same way. So somehow we've got to get around the fact that the light as a trigger may not be enough for many customers, that we don't feel an urgency as a customer sometimes if, if there isn't an immediate need. We've gotta create this need for the customer. I maintain that when it comes to, no pun intended, preventative maintenance, you've gotta, you've gotta get them into a process. This is a long-term play. This is not a short-term play. This is a long-term play. And I suggest that, that most of the time it's a three-step process. Now, can any one of these steps stand on its own? Yes, if you're consistent enough with it. It, it certainly can, you can make that case to me. But you've gotta create an identity with and within the customer that they are someone that does their preventative maintenance. You've gotta prop them up and, and let them know that their automobile is in the condition it is because they're doing a great job with preventative maintenance. More on that in just a second. You've also got to consistently educate the customer on what preventative maintenance is required and what results when preventative maintenance is not performed. 
because that's part of creating that need, that education. They don't always understand that just because the vehicle is still going down the road doesn't mean that it's going to 50,000 miles from now. And that, that immediacy just doesn't connect with them. So you've got to educate them on what you're trying to prevent with preventative maintenance. And then there's the, the visual thing. Look, many, many people are visual learners or they can learn visually. And you've got to take that opportunity to educate your customers. So you've got to have visual reminders out there. You've got to have constant reminders out there. So it's creating an identity, it's educating, and then it's reminding the customers. Now, back to that creating the identity. A lot of this for me is just word tracks, but it begins when? It begins with the very first customer visit to your shop. And, and maybe it's when you're presenting the courtesy inspection. Go back and watch the courtesy inspection videos. I think there's a series of three or four of them that we did. And think about when you're presenting that courtesy inspection to the customer using a word track like some of these. As usual, Mr. Smith, you're doing a great job maintaining your automobile. It's evidenced by the fact that everything on here is green. The only thing we've identified is you're due for a transmission service. Can we go ahead and get that done for you today to help protect that resale value of your vehicle? All right, you're propping them up. You're showing him, telling him, patting him on the back that he or she is doing a great job as usual. And it confirms their identity as someone that does preventative maintenance. If it's the first visit, you might say to the customer, I see you, you must do a great job with your preventative maintenance because your automobile virtually needs nothing today. Identify that they are doing a great job with preventative maintenance. All right, and reinforce that. And you know, look, you can use some of these word tracks, but you can also create some of your own. You've told me that you'd like to keep this vehicle for, for quite a while now. Is, it, is that still the case? All right, in that instance, since that's still the case, I'm gonna recommend a couple of preventative maintenance items today, and then you know we'll just pick away at these things in future visits as well. But today, here's what I'd like to do. Identity, that they are a great customer when it comes to preventative maintenance, will get you the sale. Maybe not today, but consistently down the line. Now, consistently educate the customer. And when I say consistent, I mean consistent. Consistency is real key for a lot of what we do, right? Have that maintenance discussion each and every time they come to you. Because look, oil changes, tire rotation, those are preventative maintenance items, right? Identify with the customer that these are preventative maintenance items. They have some level of, of education that they need these things. The oil change thing has been beat into their head since they took driver's ed in high school maybe. All right, but they don't always associate that with preventative maintenance. It's just an oil change. I know you and I do, but they may not. So connect with them every service visit and talk to them about preventative maintenance. Show them, show the customer what these processes are like. And, and you'll know, have the menus available, have their service history available, be able to have that conversation with them. You know, is an example that comes to mind from many, many years ago when I was a technician, my service advisor comes to me and, and says, hey, Greg, do you mind if this customer watches you perform this cooling system service? Now, no lie, the cooling system service that we did was just a drain and refill. It wasn't real intense. There wasn't a whole lot to it. But this customer wanted to watch me do this. Well, you know what the problem was? The problem was this woman was so terrified to bring her automobile in for service that she very rarely ever brought it in unless something was wrong. Now, somebody pointed out to her, this was in the fall in the, in the northeast of the US, that she had better have her cooling system looked at before winter because she doesn't want any problems in the wintertime. And her fear of problems in the wintertime overcame her fear of bringing it in for automotive service. So what I did with her was I spent way too long doing this service, but whatever. I showed her what we did, why we do it. I talked to her about the cooling system. I, talked, I showed her components. I lifted the veil on this big mystery that was the cooling system for her. Well, guess what happened because of that? Not only did I as a technician have a regular customer now, but she never questioned anything I said going forward. She bought anything I recommended. 
It was just a case of educating the customer on this one little thing and showing her that there wasn't a whole lot to fear about this. So education is a real key to selling preventative maintenance. Customers don't know what you know. I say this again and again, don't I? Customers don't know what you know. Show them, educate them, get good at it and be consistent at it. This is not a, just a one-time thing. Have those visual reminders around your waiting room. Use your waiting room. Look, customers are sitting there, customers are standing there, customers are, are you know, looking around there. Put visual reminders out there. Create, get, get creative, get, create some displays with maybe filters or a, or a component that went bad because of a lack of maintenance. And, and I don't care if it's a poster you create, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that you frame, but, but take examples of a lack of maintenance and the result of a lack of maintenance and associate it with preventative maintenance for the customer. If you use AutoNet TV, AutoNet TV does a great job with this. I, I work with some clients that use it and yeah, I know it'll drive you nuts as a service advisor because you hear it again and again and again during the month until they you know put up new content. But watch the customer's reaction. I, I've seen customers get up off the couch, come over to the counter and say, um, that, that thing they were just talking about, that, that transmission flush thing, is that something I should do? They pay attention to it and it does educate them. Again, this is the long game. This isn't the short game. And I know that we, we teach you to sell and we teach you to collect the money and we're always saying sell, 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 get the money, get the money, get the money. But look, sometimes selling is a long game, especially when it comes to educating on preventative maintenance. Get creative, build some displays. I want that to be your homework assignment. I want you to, to find the next, the next item that breaks down due to a lack of preventative maintenance. Find a way of associating that breakdown with preventative maintenance and, and at the very least create a, a photo or an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Maybe put it on your website. You know, maybe you should have a tab on your website that says, why do preventative maintenance? And just put some of these examples up there so customers can associate and you can use that to educate the customers. Use fluid comparison trays. Take photos of fluid comparisons. Increase your own knowledge so that you can, you can talk to the customer knowledgeably about, hey, this fluid is dark because of why. And, and show them the difference between the two. Show them what came out of their automobile. Show them what new fluid looks like. And then, and then use what we just talked about with a, you know, a failed component and say, look, ultimately, if you don't do it, this is what could happen down the line. And <laughs> this estimate was $6,000. We don't want that to happen. We can already see the fluids getting dark. So let's go ahead and take care of this today. All right, know what you're looking at. Inform yourself so that you can then inform your customer, but make it visual for them. Use that multi-point inspection, right? I mean, we talk about that. Go back again, watch those multi-point inspection videos, but use that inspection program to build a preventative maintenance mindset. Get them used to seeing green. Constantly remind them, prop them up again, create the identity with them. Remind them they do a great job maintaining their automobile, and that's why this, this courtesy inspection looks so good right now. And then look, if they need maintenance and it's listed on that courtesy inspection, use that courtesy inspection, that multi-point inspection to follow up with the customer. You know, use it with, with coupons that maybe you have out there certain times a year. Get good at your word tracks because for me, all of this stuff comes down to your word tracks. Your words do matter. So, so choose them carefully. And one thing that I've seen lately is is I think you need to be more firm than hesitant. A lot of people are they're trying to be they're trying to be soft with all of this stuff because they don't want to appear pushy. And I don't blame you. But but choose your words. I mean look, consider this that I have up here, right? I'm presenting a courtesy inspection. And maybe it's a transmission flush, maybe it's a carbon clean, I whatever the maintenance might be. And I say to you, this might be something, Mr. Smith, you'll want to consider. There's no urgency there, right? I'm, I'm hearing this and I'm thinking, oh, okay, so down the line, I'm gonna to wanna to consider this. I'll take this home and I'll think about it. Instead, what if I said, Mr. Smith, I'd like to get this done for you today to protect the resale value of your vehicle, whatever this might be. There's more urgency there, right? I want to do this today for this reason. So, so it's not a hard sell, not a hard sell at all, but it's more firm than here's something you're gonna to wanna to consider. 
No, don't consider it. I'd like to do this today. And here's why I'd like to do this for you today. Maybe there's six other things on that list too, but, but we're going we're gonna to push it down the line. Or maybe Mr. Smith looks at this and says, well, if you want to do this today, wait, should we do it all today? Well, now, funny you should ask that. Okay, but, but do you get my point? Don't, don't soft sell this too much. Be a little more firm about, let's do the preventative maintenance so that we prevent the things that happen if we don't. You can also break things into smaller pieces, right? I mean, we always, we always talk about taking the courtesy inspection and breaking it into more manageable, budgetable pieces for the customer. They might look at the full list of 60,000 mile service maintenance items and go, whoa, and then look at the dollar value associated with it and say, oh, no, I don't want to spend that today. Maybe we set them up to sell one or two items every time they come in. Maybe you increase the number of service visits See, here's the thing. I've, I've been using this in, in class a lot and some of the videos lately, but you know, the, the industry average number of visits per year is like 1.7 visits per year by customers. 1.7 visits per year? That's not enough visits to get me in the habit of seeing you and saying you're my repair shop. No, we want to increase that number of visits. So maybe we go for a smaller average repair order, but with more visits. We collect the same amount of money, but we show the customer that showing up at our doorstep is, is not painful every time. Instead of collecting $800 from me every single time I show up, you collect $300 from me. Yeah, okay, at the end of the year, you collected $900 from me, and you got all the money, but you taught me that it didn't have to be painful, and you also taught me you're my repair shop. And it gave you more opportunities to educate and create this consistency. So, so think about the, the smaller, smaller chunks when it comes to preventative maintenance. You could also look at smaller chunks like this too. Maybe, maybe we look at what's it going to cost to replace an engine? What's it going to cost to replace a transmission? What's it going to cost to replace a whatever might fail by not doing the preventative maintenance? And look at a lifetime spend of just preventative maintenance. Hey, Greg, over the lifetime of your automobile, if you do this transmission service three times, you're going you're gonna to spend $1,600 with us. But if you don't spend the $1,600 and the transmission fails, you're going to spend $6,000 for us with us because you didn't spend $1,600. So why don't we spend $400 right now, get this taken care of. You don't have to worry about it again for another however many miles. And at the end of the life of your automobile, you've got peace of mind because your total lifetime spend was a lot less. Put it in context for the customer. They don't know what these failures are going to cost. They, they, they don't spend their days creating estimates as for broken transmissions or broken engines or broken anything. They don't know what it's going to cost. They might say, ah, it's probably expensive to replace that, but they don't know how expensive it really can be. So create that association for them. And that goes back to those visual displays that I talk about. Show them what a failure costs and what preventative maintenance in a lifetime preventative maintenance spend might cost. Put it in context for them. Get good at propping them up. Teach them that they're really good at doing preventative maintenance, but you've got to use your words to reinforce that every time they come in. Show the customers what you're recommending and why you're re recommending it. Have those visuals. Show them what those processes are like. Then they'll begin to understand why it costs what it costs and, and, and show them what the failure looks like. And then they'll begin to understand what they're trying to prevent. You're creating need recognition here, right? That's the reason they don't buy. They don't recognize a need. Break that need down for them. Show them why they need it. Never ever forget that the reason for no most of the time is they don't have the need recognition. So learn to educate them. Folks, keep up the great work. Never stop learning.